Hi everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have a fun, fun and very practical project for you today. These are the June Taylor Quilt As You Go project bags. What quilter does not need several of these in their sewing room? I love project bags. As you can see, I've been keeping my blocks secure here. My books are secure here. If you're doing a block of the month, this is the Wander Lane block of the month. If you're doing a block of the month like this and you need a place to keep your blocks and your patterns, your kits, I know when I do a block of the month, my blocks tend to get scattered throughout my sewing room. I might leave one on my ironing board. There's one over here by my cutting mat. It's like they all just kind of need to corral because you have to keep them together for maybe as long as a year. So I love these project bags. They're so cute. I'm gonna show you the backs. Isn't that fun? I just love these. So we've dressed up the zipper a little bit. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. Uh, these have got, the vinyl is included in the kit so that you have the vinyl that you need. Trying to find vinyl sometimes is difficult. June Taylor has taken care of that for you. So let's make the small bag together today. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to use some magic sizing on your fabric. Always use magic sizing, especially when you're doing a quilt as you go, it helps the fabric stays creased better. Okay, so here's what's in your kit, is the fabric that you're gonna be sewing on. And I'm gonna say the word fabric, but it's not really fabric. It's more of an interfacing. This will melt if this touches your irons. Do not touch your iron to this. So the reason I have an iron on set with me today is for the vinyl. And you might think, wait a minute, if you iron vinyl, there's gonna be a mess, right? You are correct about that. But I wanna show you how this vinyl looks when it comes. It's got a crease in it in the center. And the directions told me to lay it out and just leave it and the crease would relax. Well, this has been open uh, more than 24 hours and I can still see a crease in that. I don't want a crease in the middle of my project bags. So we are going to use the June Taylor Easy Press. This is a pressing cloth by June Taylor. It's sheer so you can see through it, which is very beneficial if you're pressing out uh, special fabrics and you need to keep track of where you're at or you're pressing blocks out. But I'm gonna show you how I use this to press my vinyl. I'm gonna set my iron up. So first of all, I'm gonna set my iron to a synthetic setting. This is the lowest setting that your iron will go. Do not hit this with a hot iron and do not use steam on this, all right? So I'm gonna place my pressing cloth on top of this and we're gonna see how this magically disappears. But with this pressing cloth, it Oh, it protects my iron and that vinyl just lays right down. Go a little slower here. There we go. There we are. So you can see how those creases are coming right out of this vinyl. Let me go ahead and press this side of it. So you wanna be careful not to touch your iron directly onto the vinyl the vinyl will melt all over your iron. You're not gonna like it very much. That's what would happen in my sewing room, I think, once, right? We all do that crazy thing once where you touch something and go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So I'm very cautious when I'm doing this. I'm gonna turn this around and just keep going. But you can see how nice and flat my vinyl is. It's taking those creases right out of there. There we go, one more time, and I think I have it done. It's my pressing mat is so small, I have to keep turning the vinyl. All right. All right, so this is the Easy View Pressing Cloth by June Taylor. These are available on our website, and it, it looks like this, okay? Set that aside. I'm gonna move my pressing mat back over. All right, so let's cut our vinyl. 
That I did not do yet. I wanted to press that out with you first. So I'm going to look at my directions and I'm going to cut my bino. I'm going to use a long ruler for this, my two and a half by 24 and a half inch by Creative Grids. I love this ruler. So helpful. The other thing I wanted to show you is the vinyl comes with tissue paper. It's wrapped in tissue paper so it doesn't stick to itself. You're going to want to reserve this tissue paper for use later on, and you'll see me use that later on in the video when we're actually uh, sewing this together. I'll show you a quick and easy way to use that. So don't discard your tissue paper or give it to the cat or the children or whatever. That's usually what happens to stuff like that at my house. All right, so we're going to cut our vinyl to a 12 and a half by 17. Let me get this lined up here. Here we go. So I'm going to turn my ruler around and use the half inch side on this. This ruler, they're called a quick turnaround ruler. I love this. So you have a half inch on this side with your black numbers. You have whole numbers on this side with your white numbers. Anytime I cut a half inch, I always turn it around and I line up this solid line with a line on my cutting mat. So I always know I'm cutting dead on half an inch. That's exactly a half an inch over. I'm not trying to line this up with these little dash lines on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to cut a 12 and a half by 17. Here we go. Okay. That's going to work right there. Okay, the next step is we are going to do the quilt as you go part. All right, so now ahead of time, what I have done is I have taken my lining, which is what shows through on the front of the bag. So you want to pick something cute. I chose the house's print. I love this print. This is the on, this is the Wanderlane collection by Nancy Halverson. So we're going to start here and I'm going to take number one and you're just going to place it right in the center. Now these are placement lines. They are not sewing lines. I'm going to sew a quarter inch away from my placement line. And if you watched any of my videos, you've seen me do this. All right. So I'm going to take my first fabric and just line everything up with this placement line, number two and number three. So when I sew a quarter inch, when this turns, it's going to fill that space. So it's not quite like paper piecing where that you're sewing on the line. I want to sew next to the line on this. All right. So I'm going to use my cool pins by the Gypsy Quilter. I love these pins. They're very sturdy and they are perfect for the June Taylor projects. You'll see me use these all the time. So I'm going to pin this down. And I am pinning away from my quarter inch seam allowance because I want to be able to start here and sew all the way down and not have to stop to remove a pin. And that's very easy to do if you place your pins like this. Okay. That fabric's not going to go anywhere. I don't have any seams that I'm trying to line up or any nesting I'm doing. So I really don't need a pin right next to the edge. I just need to hold that fabric there. Okay. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and stitch this down and I'll be right back. All right, let's take out our pins. Now remember I told you, you cannot iron this, right? Because this stuff, it will melt. It, trust me, I know that. <laughs> That's a fact. I have done that before. All right, so we're just gonna fold this up and I'm gonna use the Clover Perfect Press Roll and Press. I love this tool. 
I am just going to simply roll it along the seam. And that fabric just lays there. It looks like I pressed it, but I didn't. So cool. Let's do that again. All right, perfect. All right, the next thing we're going to do is put the next two on. This one and this one. So I'm going to add this round, press it. I'm going to add the next round, press it, and then I'll be back and we will, I will show you how to finish this bag out and get the top of it done with your zipper and your vinyl, okay? Okay, here we go. I'm back and I have all my pieces sewn. This is so cute. You see the back. I use white thread so it wouldn't be visible. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin my pieces loosely along the edges here using my cool pins. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to hold these fabric pieces down because I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna stitch from the other side and I just wanna hold all these pieces in place. I don't want them really going anywhere. So when I trim it, they're secure. I'll show you. All right, so when I turn this over, what I did was I sewed this on using green thread and that's a contrasting thread. I did that so now I can see my stitching line. All right, so I'm gonna go to the machine. I'm gonna sew on my, on my stitching line all the way around, secure my fabric so you can see I put my pins well away from where I'm gonna be sewing because I don't wanna sew over one of these pins. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna take my pins out. I love that magnetic pin cushion. You see, I'm just kind of throwing my pins in that direction and they just go right on there. I love that. All right, so I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna take my long ruler again and a rotary cutter, which I knew I had. All right, and we are gonna trim now along the lines that I actually sewed before with the green thread. So I can easily see those threads, see that line. Just gonna trim this away. And we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna construct the front. I'm gonna show you how the zipper goes on this. These are so much fun to make. I just, I love making these. These are fun. All right, here we go. Our panel is done, our quilt as you go panel. All right, let's get the zipper on this now. I'll just set that up here, I think. All right, so now we're gonna take the header is what they call this. The header, there is a piece of that stuff in here. I've quilted this ahead of time. So you can see that interfacing is here in the center of this. So I cut that out on the lines and I just sandwiched that between my header for my bag and I used a clover white marking pencil. I love these pencils. They are amazing. They easily show up. They're washable. This comes right out. Actually, if you just brush it, it comes right off. I'll show you how this marks. See that? It's a perfect mark and you can just rub it and it comes out. I would not be without my clover pencils. So I've got a white, a blue, and a pink, and they're sold in a package of three. We do have those on our website. So I marked my crosshatch, and I just sewed it with navy blue thread. All right, so that is done. Now I'm gonna take my zipper. This is called the Zippity Do Done Zipper by June Taylor. That's their name for this, very clever. So they have two pieces of like bias tape here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sandwich our 
header into this and I am going to use my cool pins and I'm pinning in a specific direction because I'm going to start here and sew down to this end and I'm pinning my pins this way so that as I'm sewing, I'm not going to get caught on pins. All right, let's get this on here. So I'm going to use white thread when I do this, and I have a white bobbin in because I don't want that stitching to show. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go to the machine, and I'm just going to top stitch this about an eighth of an inch from here all the way down to here. Ah, that is beautiful. Now, on the other side of this is going to go my vinyl. So we're going to take our vinyl that we had from the first step. We pre-cut that. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to set my vinyl inside here, just like that. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to make sure that my vinyl overlaps my header, and it does ni very nicely. It's the same size as my zipper, which is great. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and pin this. You're going to have to kind of coax those pins through a little bit. That's another reason I like these stable pins. These cool pins are really nice for this. If I was using my fine patchwork pins, they would be completely bent by now. Put another pin in. I think I'm going to pin this one more time. I don't want this vinyl to move on me. I want it to stay right there. There we go. All right, so again, I'm going to top stitch here all the way down. Cool. Now, if you wanted to, you could stop here and you could just you could just go ahead and assemble this to the front of your bag, clip it together and go. However, I think it looks really cool to put a little decorative piece of fabric in there. And they do give you directions for that, but I'm gonna tell you how I did mine. I took a two inch strip of fabric and I folded it in half, wrong sides together. And now I'm just gonna fold each end to the center, just like this. My iron says, I don't want to sit on the fabric. I'm going to raise up because you let go of me. <laughs> I love this Alyssa iron. It is amazing. We use these all the time here at Shabby Fabrics. Oh, that's perfect. Yep. So we're just going to keep on going. All right, to the end. All right, now that we have it folded like this, it kind of looks like bias tape, doesn't it? All right, now I'm just going to take it and I'm going to fold it in half and press it. And I'm going to take my wonder clips, which are right here. And I'm just going to put a little clip in the end of this. I just want to hang on to that so that fabric remembers it's supposed to stay like that. Give me something to hang on to and pull it. Put another clip in this about right here. Just press this along. 
They're just making a little decorative accent to put on the zipper. You can use any kind of fabric you like. I like the green to bring back into the front of these. Thought that was cute. There we go. All right. Oh, look at that. There's a mini wonder clip in with my wonder clips. You see how little this one is? This is a mini wonder clip. They're just like half the size of the wonder clips. I don't know how he got in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the machine and I'm gonna start sewing this an eighth of an inch on the folded edge because I want to seal those two edges together, all right? I don't want them to come apart. So I'm gonna top stitch this and I'm gonna change my thread to green and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have sewn on that side. Let me trim this thread. And I didn't top stitch the other side because I'm gonna do that when I top stitch it to the back. So I didn't feel the need to top stitch it twice. So we just need to do it once. So let's get our bag over here. I'm gonna take the front of this. Now, I want this to lay straight on here. So I have a trick for getting this to lay straight. This is Wash Away Wonder Tape. I love Wonder Tape. It is wonder. It is just like the name implies. And I'm just gonna apply it just to the back. And I'm just pressing this on. It's sticky. It does wash away. So if you were to use this like on clothes or in a quilt, first time you wash that quilt, this tape is gonna be completely gone. It is not gonna be there. I don't ever intend to wash my project bags, but you never know. You never know. Okay, so we get this started, and we're just gonna peel the paper away from this like this. Okay. It's very sticky on the other side. And I know that this is a lot longer than I need, so I'm just gonna start placing this. As I'm placing it, I'm just pressing this down Pressing this into place. And I'm just trying to keep, I'm lining this up straight in front of me on the table so I can kind of keep an eye on what's happening with this. I want to keep this straight with the zipper, just like that. Now, you could take this straight to your machine and just stitch this, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and apply my wonder tape to my other one that I already made, and I'm gonna put another one right here. Move my little zipper tab out of the way, just like that, all right? So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll see you over at the machine, and I will top stitch that down. All right, so I'm back. We have got the two, isn't that cute? I've got it all stitched down. Very simple, easy to do. It didn't take a lot. You can put all kinds of decorative trim, ribbons, embellishments, whatever you like on the front of this. Have fun with it. I would love to see pictures of what you guys have done with project bags. Please post pictures for us, either in our Facebook group, you can tag us on Instagram, or put, or just right here on YouTube. I would love to see what you guys are doing with these. These zippers come in different colors. So if you have a project that's red, we have a red zipper or a, a tan zipper, or there's all colors of zippers and we do have them all, okay? These are the white ones that we used. All right, so now I'm gonna take the backing slash front slash lining kind of, right? We're gonna lay it out and now I'm gonna trim and I'm gonna make sure, aha, yay, these two pieces match as they should. All right, you can see that, these match. So now I'm gonna trim my vinyl and my zipper to be the same size, all right, as my back piece, as my quilted piece. All right, here we go. 
So I'm cutting through a lot of layers, especially with the zipper. I'm gonna cut slowly over it. It is a vinyl or plastic zipper, so it's not metal. So it's not gonna destroy my blade, but I do have a new blade in here to be able to get through that thickness of that. Here we go. Yep, no problem. Okay, one more trim, make sure I'm still lined up like I thought I was. Everything looks good. There we go, perfect. All right, now it's starting to take shape. I love that. Okay, so our next step is to sew these two together, all right, and to do that, Remember I told you we had that tissue paper? Ha, here's where I put it. I know I had that. I know I put it aside somewhere. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just gonna trim some one inch strips. And yes, I'm gonna use the same rotary cutter and cut paper with it. I just need a one inch strip I think I'm gonna cut three of them, should be plenty. Okay. Okay, now the cat can have tissue paper. My cats love that kind of thing, I don't know why. It makes noise, I think, and crinkles. They love it. Okay, here we go. So now I'm gonna take my clips. I definitely wanna clip this. Anytime I'm working with vinyl, I'm not gonna put any pins through this. The only time I'm gonna put a, a hole in it is when I stitch it to this, all right? It's when I'm stitching, all right? So I'm going to start clipping this now, all right? You could probably use pins at the top if you wanted to, but since I have the clips out, I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this together. And I'm making sure that I'm putting my wonder clips, the bottom with the flat side is the side that goes against the bed of your sewing machine. So it glides across your machine. This would get caught in my feet, my feed dogs. Oh, there's that little baby one again. He keeps coming to the top. Okay, so I'm gonna take my tissue paper and just lay it on here. And I'm gonna clip that and grab it out of here like this. All right, there we go. Just gonna clip this all together, clipping that tissue paper right in there. Now the tissue paper is going to prevent my feed, my presser foot from grabbing a hold of the vinyl and it's just gonna slide seamlessly across. I'm gonna be able to sew this easily Otherwise, my presser foot tries to grab that vinyl because it's kind of like a, it's tacky, right? It's almost tacky. It's not slippery like you would expect. Okay, one more side and we're gonna head to the machine and I'm going to stitch this together. What? Turn that over. All right, that should do it. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch with a basting stitch close to the outer edge all along this, all the way around this. When I come back, I'll have that done and I'll show you how to finish it with the binding. Okay, so we basted that down, put my clips away. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear off my tissue paper. Okay, so we've got our paper off. I've got uh, everything done. One last step to finish this bag and that's our binding. All right, 
So I had made my binding ahead of time. I simply took a two and a half inch strip, folded it together, wrong sides, and pressed it just as you normally would. Regular binding. All right, I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna stitch this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start about right here, but I'm gonna leave a long tail, maybe a little longer than that. Ah, I like that better. Okay, so I'm gonna start stitching here around miter my corners, all the way around. I'm gonna leave an opening, a, quite a substantial opening, because I want my magic binding to come together correctly. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and start right here and sew this on. So I will see you at the sewing machine. All right, I'm back. I have my two long tails, top and bottom, sewed my binding on. Let me show you how I attach this. So I'm gonna have a ruler. My ironing mat over here. This'll work. Let me grab a friction pen. All right, so what I wanna do, is I'm gonna fold my binding like this. And I want to leave a gap between my two folds. I want a quarter inch gap. This does not have to be a perfect exact quarter inch. I just eyeball this. I do not measure that. All right, we get my quarter inch. This is also why I started at the top because I have to put an iron on this binding. I could not do that if I had started here at the bottom on the vinyl. I would be melting vinyl to my iron right now. So this is a hot iron. I have this turned all the way up to cotton because I want that seam to set right in there. We want those creases. That looks great. All right, so this strip, we're gonna open it and I'm just gonna lay it open like this. You can see that nice crease in the top and I can see my crease to this horizontally there. I'm gonna take this strip, open it up, and I'm just gonna turn it like this, okay? Now I'm gonna match the bottom crease with this crease, and I'm matching the top crease on this piece of binding with the side crease on this one, all right? Just like that. I'm going to lay my ruler parallel to my project, all right? And I am going to draw a line with a friction pen. This is my sewing line that I am drawing, just like that. And I'm gonna take a couple of pins here. I'm gonna put one pin across the top, like that. Oh, get out of the way so you guys can see that. And I'm gonna put my other pin along the side. I'm going to lay my ruler parallel okay, I pin to this my side because I don't want this coming Better? apart. Yeah, I, like I don't that. want this one coming okay. apart. Now I'm You're just going to go sew this yeah, right along the seam and I'll show you how this works. All right, here we go. I'm going to take out my pins. Now I'm actually going to test this. and Look at that. It fits perfect. I'm testing it before I cut it. If it did not work, I would have to re-sew that, but it's perfect. This method of doing binding works perfectly every time. I'm just gonna trim this with a pair of scissors. I could trim this with a rotary cutter if you wanted to. I generally just use scissors. It's nobody's gonna see this seam, just a little quarter inch seam allowance. Perfect, and I'm gonna press my seam open 
I'm pressing this seam open for a couple of reasons. One, it's binding, and I always do that. Second, I am going to hand stitch this binding to the back of this. Okay, so now I'm going to go stitch this together. You can see how nice and straight and even that is. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this closed. All right, there we go. I got the binding on. Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to hand stitch this binding to the back of this project. Normally, if you guys have seen my other videos, I know I normally will take and top stitch along the edge of this to catch my binding with my machine on the back. I machine stitch all kinds of binding, placemats, table runners, wall hangings, even quilts if I'm giving them to my grandkids because I know they're going to be washed a lot. I always, always machine stitch my binding. But in this case, I'm going to sew this down by hand. My reason being, I don't want to run another line of stitching right here along that vinyl. I think that those stitches, those holes, could weaken that vinyl a little bit, and I did not want to do that. I decided that it had been stitched enough to hold it in place that I would now simply use my binding clips, my wonder clips, clip this, and go sit on the couch with a cup of tea and hand stitch my binding. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I absolutely love the June Taylor Project bags. We love these things. Um, I've made several in a lot of different collections. And again, I would really love to see what you guys do with this. If you do some decorative quilting in here, how you dress up your bags, please let us know. And I'll see you next time on a Shabby Fabrics video.